Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. The book of Malachi, that powerful tome that sealed the Old Testament canon, became the final word from God for 400 years until the coming of John the Baptist, offers this instruction about the relationship between God and Israel. Even from the days of your fathers ye have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? In one sense, the passage summarizes so much of God's involvement with his chosen people through the long centuries from wayward Jacob to faithful Malachi. It shows the very apex of his self-revealing and patient love, his tender pleading to draw the wanderer back, being met by man's refusal to answer. And that sad answer is only too typical of the way people have responded to his gentle call. You and I are people. Sometimes some of us find ourselves in the self-same place. And because we do, the old message is still relevant. The gracious invitation of the text presupposes there has been a departure. The souls tenderly recalled have first gone away. There has been a breach of love. Dependence has been unwelcome and cast off with the vain hope of a larger freedom in the siren call of a deceptive world. And this is the true charge. It is not so much individual acts of sin as it is departing in heart and spirit from our Father God, which shows the inmost essence of our true condition. And it is the real source of sinful acts. Once that departure takes place, sharp pricks of conscience confirm the trespass. Sinners depart from him by the use of their wills, having built walls of puny excuses and fleeting passions against his calm and eternal purpose, and so pushing away the gracious gift of a loving father and his offer of eternal life. The verses just before read, I am the Lord, I change not. It is the greatest feature of life as we know it that Almighty God, creator of all that is, remains the same, however we have sinned against and departed from him. After all the seemingly endless centuries of dealing with an often rebellious and backsliding nation, as the era of their dispensation closes, he still extends an invitation and a welcome. We may depart from him, but he hardly departs from us, nor does he wait for us to originate the movement of return. He invites us back by all his words in his threatening and in his commandments, as in the acts of his providence, we can hear his call to return. Earthly fathers never cease to long for their prodigal child's return, yet their most patient persistence of hope is brief and broken when contrasted with the infinite long-suffering of the Father of Spirits. There are two ways to look at the phrase, wherein shall we return? One of them is without really declaring an unwillingness to return, but with that ugly feature concealed under a mask of desiring a little more light as to how. Not many are rooted enough in evil as to be able to blurt out a curt I will not in answer to his call. But there are many who try to cheat God and do to some extent cheat themselves by pretending ignorance of the way which would lead him to his heart. Some have learned only too well to raise questions to dabble in theology instead of making sure work of return. But the question of our text can have another nobler urgent origin pardon, coming from the depths of a troubled heart. The poor soul lying broken at the bottom of the pit into which he has fallen, seeing the brightness of God far above, has his heart torn with the question, How am I with these shattered limbs to climb out? How shall man be just with God? All the religions of the world, with their offerings and penances and weary toils, are vain attempts to make a way back to God. Wherein shall we return is really the meaning of the world's vain seeking and profitless effort. God has answered man's question. For Christ is at once the way back to God and the motive which draws us to walk in it. He is the highest, most tender melody of the divine voice. Have you talked to him today? You have been listening to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at g-o-d-s-f-i-v-e minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's 5 Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.